Okay, good morning most excellent students uh, and welcome to this video on diverging lenses. Now, um, okay, um, in this lesson we're going to uh, draw the ray diagram for a diverging lens. Um, in the previous lessons we've drawn the various ray diagrams for the converging lens. Um, the diverging lens we can do in a very similar way. Now, the reference for this is uh, the textbook and it's page 115. So there it is. Um, so if you look up your textbook, page 115, uh, there's the diagram that we're trying to produce. Okay. Now, I was going to say something else, but I've completely forgotten what it was. Never mind. Uh, okay, right. Um, oh yes, this is a learning objective. Remember those? Okay, so we're going to draw a ray diagram for a diverging lens and then we'll see what that actually looks like in reality. Okay, so um, to do this we're going to need a pencil, a ruler, possibly a rubber, and squared paper, okay, of which you should have a supply. Now, we'll dive right into it. Um, for the diverging lens, we draw the ray diagram using exactly the same rules as before. So, we set up the diagram in the same way, like this. Here is the principal axis of the lens. I'm going to put the lens right here. We represent the lens simply by a vertical line. So, the y-axis is representing the lens. Now, um, as we did before, I'm going to draw in what the lens actually looks like, but remember that uh, this is not actually what it is, uh, or the way that we represent it. Okay, so there is a diverging lens shape. Okay, so that's what it would be like in reality. We're representing it simply by this line, and the symbol we use for that uh, the stylized representation is that we put little arrowheads at the end of the line but they point inwards instead of outwards and the idea is I think that these sort of represent the concave nature of the diverging lens so that it's kind of suggesting that it's thicker at the top and thinner in the middle so it curves inward like this okay now therefore this point here is the center of the lens um, a diverging lens has a focal point. Um, we're going to assume that the focal length of this diverging lens is 15 centimeters. So using the same scale as we used in our previous diagrams where one centimeter on the page represents five centimeters in reality, um, if we say that we have a 15 centimeter focal length then that's going to correspond to 1 to 5, so 15 divided by 5 is 3 centimeters in reality or on the page. Now, if we count out then, that's 5, 10, 15 centimeters to scale, the principal focus is here. And the same on the other side, 1, 2, 3, that's 15, 5, 10, 15 centimeters. Um, and if we keep going, we can also mark. Um, 2f on this lens as well. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 2f is here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 2f is here. Okay, now we're going to place an object in front of the diverging lens and we're going to place it um, at 40 centimeters, an object distance of 40 centimeters from the lens. So if we count out, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Now you'll notice this is exactly the same setup as we had for the first diagram with the converging lens. So that's the object. I'm going to make the object 2 centimeters high as before. Now, so far that's pretty much the same as the converging lens. We now want to work out where the image of this object will be. 
And to do that, we can use the special magic rays as before. And we do it like this. The first magic ray comes from the head of the object and runs parallel to the principal axis, like so. Now, when that ray gets to the lens, it's going to be refracted. But this is a diverging lens, so it diverges the rays of light. And a ray of light that is parallel to the principal axis will be diverged so that it appears to come from the principal focus on the same side of the lens as the object. So this ray is going to be diverged so that it diverges from the principal axis. So it's actually going to go up like that. Okay. Now, we can extend the ray backwards, but we do it with a dotted line to indicate that it's virtual because light does not actually travel along this path. This is the actual path of the ray of light. This is a virtual ray. Okay. The second ray we can draw is the ray from the head of the object that goes through the center of the lens. Now, a thin diverging lens will behave in the same way as a thin converging lens. The center is parallel sided and therefore the ray passes through effectively undeviated. So it just goes straight through like that. And we have that. Okay, so the rays of light coming from the object have been diverged. Um, they're clearly not going to meet anywhere over here, so we're not going to get a real image. Where is there going to be an image? And the answer is here. Can you see that the virtual ray and this real ray both converge or meet here? That means that the head of the image is going to be right here. Okay. Now, if we put a screen there, we would not pick up the image because at least one of the rays is virtual. So there is no real image there to pick up. The only way we could perceive this image is if we view the rays as they emerge from the other side. So if you put your eye on the other side of the lens and view the object as seen through the lens, the lens will diverge the rays and it diverges them so that they appear to come from this point. So therefore, your eye sees an image. Okay. Now, uh, you might say, well, these rays don't go anywhere near the eye. But remember, this is a stylized diagram. Um, in reality, these two rays perhaps might not actually enter your eye, but other rays will. And uh, those rays also are coming from this image. Okay, so what's the nature of the image? Well, first of all, we say that it is virtual because um, it's formed by a ray that doesn't pass through it. And we can't see it on a screen. We can only see it by virtue of the rays of light that reach our eye. Um, it is diminished. And it is upright. Um, and its position, well, it's on the same side of the lens as the object, and it's in between the principal focus and the lens. Now, as before, what I should have said at the top of this video is that you should be drawing this diagram along with me. Um, on a piece of squared paper. Um, if you haven't done so, that's no biggie. You can just go back and restart the video and go through the process to produce this diagram. Um, let's see if we can see what that looks like in reality. Um, 
Now I've got here a diverging lens. So here it is. This actually is a 15 centimeter focal length diverging lens. Um, I don't know if we can see that it's thinner in the middle than it is on the outside. Um, now, if we get a page, I'll move this out of the way, like this, um, and let's look through it. If we put an object like this pencil in front of the lens, and then I hold the lens up and move it across so you can see the pencil through the lens. Can you see that the image as seen through the lens is upright? It's smaller than the object, so it's diminished, and it's virtual. Okay, We're not obtaining it on a screen, we're seeing it through the lens, um, and therefore it's not being obtained on a screen. Um, so this is what happens. The object is on the far side of the lens. When we look through the lens, we see the image. The image is virtual, it's diminished, but it's upright. Okay. Now actually for the converging lens, it doesn't really matter where we put the object, the image is always virtual, diminished, and upright. If we go back to the diagram, um, you might be able to deduce that if we move the object, if we push the object further in, uh, the image will move, I think, a little bit closer to the lens, but it will still be virtual diminished and upright. If we push the object in further, it will still be virtual diminished and upright. So actually, no matter where we put the object um, in front of the diverging lens, the image is always uh, the same. So we don't have to draw a series of diagrams. In this case, one is enough. OK, you know what you need to do now? Um, do your own diagram, you know, title it, and stick it in. So this is the, I'm going to title it exactly as it is in the textbook. So, right, and we'll stick that into our notebook. Right. <sighs> I think that's the end of this video. We've gone over 12 minutes. Um, I uh, thank you for learning with me this morning. I've enjoyed learning with you.